Laser sights will make you a more accurate and confident shooter by providing visual feedback on sight alignment and trigger control. Crimson Trace, making laser sight standard equipment. Learn more at crimsontrace.com. Today on Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, it's the ins and outs of reloading, updates from state gun rights groups, and your range reports. Call in now, one Tom Talk gun. Now here's one happy father, Tom Gresham. And a big old Father's Day welcome to you. Tom Gresham here, it's Gun Talk. Glad uh, to be with you. Glad that we can spend some time together today. We're going to have some fun. We're going to talk about guns, talk about maybe the stories of Going out with your father, grandfather, doing some hunting, doing some shooting, the guns that you had, whether you're a son or a daughter, time spent with dad, and also, of course, uh, love those stories. Any stories you have about uh, shooting or guns with your dad, would love to have those here. Our number is 866-TALK-GUN, or just dial Tom, talk gun. That will certainly get you in here. Again, Tom Gresham, it is Gun Talk. There are, of course, a lot of things in the news, and we'll be talking about that a fair amount today. If you are a regular listener to Gun Talk, you know that Representative Congressman Steve Scalise has been uh, a guest on our show a number of times. He is from Louisiana. He's our congressman. Obviously, we had the shooting, the assassination attempt this week where Congressman Scalise was seriously injured. Many, many takeaways on this. And what has been fascinating to me is how so many in the media, it's not that they turn, well, maybe they do, they they turn a blind eye to what is so obvious to so many of us. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to see it. And they most certainly do not want to repeat it because it goes against their agenda and it goes against their bias and it goes against their core belief that guns are bad, guns are bad, guns are bad. In this case, guns saved a lot of people. And so what happened, of course, as we know, is that we have this this loon. And look, I was on Twitter immediately when this happened. And way before we knew who he was, I said, look, this is going to turn out to be a lefty loon. Just is. The atmosphere today, the environment today of the hate talk of the leftist calling Donald Trump a Nazi, uh, calling, uh, showing a beheading of the president, the atmosphere, the environment that they have created, this assassination attempt is a logical extension of that. So, I mean, that is, that's a given That's just like air. It's there. You can't argue that. But what has been interesting is to see the usual crowd, the usual suspects coming out of the woodwork, Virginia Governor McAuliffe calling for more gun control. You know, there are just way too many guns on the street. And then, of course, (laughs) announcing that. Well, guns killed 93 million people a day in the United States. And the, the reporters go, what, what, what? And he repeated it like three or four times. Guns killed 93 pe- million people a day in the United States. And finally, it's like he actually listened to himself. Went, oh, wait, no, 93 pe- people a day. Yeah, okay, Governor. All right, let's, let's review we have a guy who showed up. He's, he's here. He's, he's an assassin. He's decided that he's going to kill as many Republicans, as many conservatives as he can before the police get there and kill him. He has no expectation of living for, I mean, his lifespan is measured in minutes, and he knows that. But he's figured he's going to get five or ten minutes, and that's all he's going to need to kill a lot of people. So he shows up. He starts shooting and in the process of all the shooting, a lot of these uh, people who are practicing for the baseball game run into a dugout, and he starts maneuvering. He's going to maneuver over to where they are. He's going to shoot them all. It is shooting fish in a barrel. He's going to kill them all. 
His plan is to murder conservatives, murder Republicans, as many as possible. And the only reason he didn't is because two people there had guns. It was happenstance. It was fortuitous. But it always makes our point. And people, it's it's funny how people on the left mock it, but it continues to be true. The only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. And in this case, we had two Capitol Police officers with handguns going up against a guy with a rifle, and he's bunkered in. He's got cover. But what they're able to do, and here's the thing, they use their training, and they train on active shooter scenarios. They use their training. They were able to keep his head down to distract him, to keep him from continuing to shoot members of Congress. And they were able to maneuver, even though one had been shot, and another had been injured in the process, the officers were, they maneuvered, they shot, they moved, they eventually got to where they could shoot him, and then they shot him enough times to make him stop, which happened to be enough times to make him die, which is in the who cares category. If that offends you, get over it. Who cares? He was killing people. If he happened to die from his injuries, that's what he had planned anyway. So the only difference between Pick a number, 15 people dead, and only the bad guy dead is because there were people there who had guns who could shoot back. Hasn't been lost on a lot of people. We had one congressman say, hey, you know, we've got to set it up so members of Congress can have reciprocity. If they have a carry permit in their state, they can carry in D.C., to which my immediate response was, Whoa, what do you mean members of Congress could have reciprocity? Your life is not worth one dime more than my life. Make it where everybody has reciprocity because everybody should have the ability to stop someone who is shooting at them. It, it, it's really kind of a simple, obvious, clear human right concept. You have the right to live. And someone's trying to take that away from you. You have the right to stop that person from trying to take away your life. That's a human right. It supersedes all written law. So, what's your takeaway? When you saw this developing, you heard this developing, you watched what was going on, what, was your, what were your thinking? What did you come up with? I would like to know what the conversations have been that you've had with your friends and family members. I would like to know if it has in any way changed your behavior, your thought patterns on this. Our number is 866-TALK-GUN. That's 866-TALK-GUN. Hey, Kelly, don't go anywhere. When we come back, we'll get to you also. We have room for you. If you'd like to call us right now, just call us. Tom Talk Gun. Be right back. Savage just made the modern sporting rifle better. Available in four variations, the MSR-15 Patrol and Recon and MSR-10 Hunter and Long Range. All with 5R rifling for easier cleaning and enhanced accuracy. Correct gas system links for reliability and reduced recoil. Upgraded trigger system and corrosion resistant barrels. Savage MSRs. Better come standard. See more at SavageArms.com or ask your local gun dealer to see the Savage MSR rifles. Are you looking for a place to shoot? The National Shooting Sports Foundation has a great website called wheretoshoot.org. It's the largest database of shooting ranges on the Internet. It's also a great resource for shooters where you can find video tips, printable targets, and a lot more. Find it online at wheretoshoot.org. And while you're there, download their free iPhone app. That's wheretoshoot.org.
26 years, the U.S. Sportsmen's Alliance has been fighting to protect hunting, fishing, and trapping for sportsmen from coast to coast. Today, we are under constant attack from extremist animal rights groups who want to end your ability to hunt in the U.S. Join us to protect our sporting heritage and our way of life outdoors. To join or for more information on how you can help, go to ussportsmen.org. That's ussportsmen.org. The Black Hills. There's nothing like it on Earth. The kind of place where characters become legends. Wild Bill Hickok. Crazy Horse. Calamity Jane. Pick any part of the world and you'll find people go there to make it their own. But this is where people come to get made. This is the place that made the people who make the best ammo on Earth. Black Hills Ammunition. Back with the 866 Talk Gun gets you in your line two. Kelly's with us out of Beaverton, Oregon. Hey, Kelly, welcome to Gun Talk. I understand you just uh, made a trip. Hey, I did. Actually, it was actually it was in March. I'm just getting around to be able okay. to call you. Yeah, they are finally doing a course at gun sight for old gomers like me. It's called the 250 <laughs> SC, as in senior citizen, but I'll just call it the Gomer course. And uh, taught by <laughs> Larry Landers and Jerry McCown. I mean, we talk about the guys that have been there for 150 years. Those are the guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, they had Ed, Ed on hand and uh, some other folks, uh, of course, that, uh, you know, popped in and out. Ted Campbell, you know, he's the manager there and everything. And, uh, of course, these guys are all, you know, experts in the field and all that. But, yeah, for someone like me that's uh, getting on and can't get down on the ground, you know, and jump back up, and the regular mm-hmm. 250 course mm-hmm. has quite a bit of that in it, and uh, with bad knees and bursitis, things like that, you know, there's just a lot of folks who can't get down. So this was the perfect course sure. because it is the five-day 250 course, but you are staying on your feet. And uh, there's plenty of rest stops, things like that, mm-hmm. you know, to get through it because mm-hmm. it is five days. It is intensive. Uh, I guarantee you, you, you'll get some shooting in. <laughs> hey, Kelly, was Boy, this your first you ever... time to a gun sight? <laughs> What's that? Was this your first time to gun sight? Yes, it was my first time. My first. What is your? How did it change you? Well. Uh, to bring all the aspects of the things you have been told and possibly taught in other small courses, one-day courses. Uh, I mean, I took Mike Seeklander's course sometimes back, which is a three-day course, mm-hmm. um, or t- in two days, actually, of Mike's course. But uh, you, when you're there at Gunsight, you're just immersed in the whole discipline from everything from mindset to understanding all responsibility to understanding your environment. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's classroom time. Uh, there's just so much. You're soaked in it, and you absorb so much more than just going somewhere for one day or two days. Uh, I mean, it's it's five days and a night shoot on top of that. So it's actually more than five days. Right. So it's it is intensive, but it is exhilarating. It's a, it's exhausting. Uh, it's just worth every penny. <laughs> what can I say? It's if you haven't done <laughs> it, 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 you need to do it. It is. It, it, uh, I mean, that's it. It's worth every penny. If you haven't done it, you need to do it. I mean, it's over yep. and over. I hear the same things. And, uh, you know, and it, you come away a different person. Hey, Kelly, look, that's a great range report. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I want to talk with uh, Tori for a minute here on line three out of Spokane, Washington. Tori, talk to me. What What are you thinking here? Well, I was wondering if you've seen on the news, I was watching... NBC National News after that shooting, and mm-hmm. that uh, Lester Hall or something like that is his name. The guy that does the news. Holt. Lester, Lester Holt. Holt. Yes, he had a new one for me. Mm-hmm. I'd never heard. He said the shooter had an assault handgun, and I was wondering if you could mm-hmm. tell me what that is. That's a new one for me. That is a, a term that is uh, used whenever they want to talk about something that they want to ban. So it can be, I've seen it applied to knives, assault knives, assault handguns, assault rifles, assault shotguns. It could probably be an assault big pen if they wanted to ban those. 
Obviously, it's a meaningless term. It has no definition whatsoever, and it's strictly used by people like Lester Holt who think that they are smarter than everyone else and know that they must try to save us by educating us so that they can then take away these very dangerous things. The only way they can do that is to apply a name to them that is so frightening and so scary that they can con the public into believing there actually is such a thing as an assault handgun or an assault rifle, which is, again, the whole assault weapon thing, total myth, total bogus, total political theater. There is no such thing as an assault weapon, friends and neighbors. So your instinct is right on the money. For for years I've heard the assault rifle, and I, you know, I tell friends or coworkers, I said, there's no such thing. It's a... It's a rifle, you know, and then now that's the first time I've heard it as a handgun. I I will say this. There actually is a thing called an assault rifle in military terms, and it's a uh, select fire semi-auto. But when the media talks about assault rifles or assault weapons, what they actually mean is a semi-automatic. That is the same kind of rifle that President Theodore Roosevelt used when he hunted more than 100 years ago. So, but it, it, it's what they do. It's the term they apply, and, they, and the only reason they do it is they have found it effective. Saturday Night Special is a term that they used for a while. That didn't stick. Then they went with junk gun. That didn't stick. So they keep trying these terms to say, what can we apply to guns that will frighten the public so much that they would want to ban it? And they've been fairly effective at convincing the public that quote-unquote assault weapons are actually machine guns. Here, here's a thing for you, Tori. Ask people you know who are not shooters, who don't really know much about guns, uh, what is a, an assault weapon? And then specifically, is a mach- assault weapon a machine gun? Does it just keep shooting as long as you hold the trigger down? And I'll bet you more than half of them will say that's exactly what it is. They've been that much misinformed about the whole thing. Yeah, that's good. That's true. Something to ask them. Yeah. Hey, Tori, listen, I appreciate the call. I do need to run down to Albert in uh, Haysburg, Mississippi on line four. Hey, Albert, uh, as you're watching this whole thing uh, this week with the shooting of Sk- Steve Scalise and the uh, attack on the GOP members, what are you thinking? Well, I'm I'm thinking I w- I'm so glad that there were two officers there that uh, took that situation under control and diffused it quickly before any more lives got taken in that scenario. Uh, you know, liberals have run around here blaming guns for all the trouble in the world, and it's not, the, it's not the guns. I've been a gun owner my whole life, hunted since I was 14 years old by myself. And, you know, if, if you know gun safety and you're not a lunatic or a psychotic person, then guns are not a problem. It's the person that creates these problems, not the weapons. Uh, of course. But, of course, what... There's a, there's a whole thing of uh, psychological issues for those who say crazy people, or in this case, some people are not crazy. I don't think this guy was crazy. I think he was just mean. I think he was just evil. And uh, that's a whole lot well, different from that's crazy. True. That, that's true. That's true. That, there, that, that's true. You know, evil is going to be here. You know, you can't have a balance without, without evil. You can't. You don't mm-hmm. know if you don't know evil. You don't know what good is, and and that is, I agree one hundred percent. But I am just know, so glad that. that uh, yeah, no kidding. I mean, talk about you talk about your terrible situation just from a tactical standpoint. You got a guy who is in a dugout. He has cover and he has a rifle, and what you're out there in the open and you have handguns. That's like the definition of it's a really bad day. But they cowboyed up, and they did what they had to do, and they saved, in fact, they saved everybody's life because you know, none of the people he was shooting at died. And that's a pretty fabulous deal because he th- – let me ask you, Albert, do you think there's any possibility he wouldn't have killed as many as possible if he hadn't been stopped? Well, no, he would have killed everyone there if he wouldn't have been stopped. He, he would have kept yeah. shooting until he ran out of bullets. He had them hemmed up. They had, mm-hmm. they had nowhere to go, you know. You know, if I would have been there, I, I would have been coming over the fence to help him. You know, I would have I would have done what those two heroes done. I would have went right for him to try to stop him. You know, those two guys were one heroes. Of the things that, that 
Yeah. I, actually, it's a guy and a gal, man and woman, uh, officers. And I, I want to throw this thought out. I, you probably have heard me talk about this over the last few years. And look, I appreciate the call, sir. I need to, I'm going to make this point. Based on the increase in active shooters, active killers, if you prefer, and the rapid increase in terrorist attacks all over the United States, not just the world, but all over the United States. You've heard me say this. I've been making sure that when I am carrying, I'm carrying enough ammunition. Well, what does that mean? Well, we don't know what it actually it means. I just know that what feels like not enough and uh, uh, a seven round magazine with one spare doesn't feel like enough. I, th- I think in terms of a guy who is bunkered with a rifle and at the very least what I need to do is keep his head down until the cavalry arrives. How many rounds is that going to take? I don't know. I think I could make a case that's going to take more than seven and it may take more than 14. It depends on a million different variables. But it is why, generally speaking, not always, but generally speaking, I have gone to a double-stack 9 millimeter semi-auto with an extra magazine. I like having 25-plus rounds on me. I also, I'm just wondering, how do, how... How does anybody look at this and not come away with the solid concept that only because good guys had guns there did these people stay alive? And and they said, well, yeah, of course, it's good to have the police there. Well, what if they hadn't been there? Would you have been okay with one of the congressmen having a gun and shooting back? Yeah. I will also throw this out, and I'm just throw this out, food for thought, get your, your reaction to it. It has made me consider, consider the possibility of making sure I have access to a rifle wherever I go. Could be an SBR, could be an AR type pistol that could be fired like a rifle that has the power and the capacity of, you know, I don't know, but I'm just saying there are different ways to carry things in bags and everything else. Have you ever had that thought that maybe you'd like to have a rifle where you could get to it? 866-TALK-GUN. Sign up for our Gun Talk newsletter and join the Truth Squad at www.guntalk.com. Now, back to Gun Talk with Washington Times opinion page regular contributor, Tom Gresham. All right, welcome back. 866-TALK-GUN gets you in here. Just, or just now, Tom Talk Gun. Of course, we have our uh, videos available on YouTube, Roku, Amazon Fire, oh, let's see, Apple TV, and, of course, on Sportsman Channel, our TV shows Gun Venture and Guns and Gear appear. And we'll have the new series, the uh, new season, that is, starting in just a few weeks now. A very few weeks, starting in July. So we've been really busy cranking out some interesting stuff I think you're really going to enjoy. Going cool places, doing fun things, and <laughs> playing with some interesting guns. Having a good time. All righty. Uh, let's see here. Let's go to Bob on line two. He's in Portland, Oregon with a range report for us. Bob, what have you been shooting? Uh, Walter Creed pistol. Uh, could not yeah. be happier with this pistol. Yeah, it's just great. Um, bought it and uh, took it home, cleaned it, moved it up with some M Pro 7, took it down to a uh, place to shoot down here. The first two things through it at 21 feet, I shot a group ragged hole you could cover with like half a tennis ball. The sights were dead on, and the trigger breaks like a glass rod. I mean, this thing is awesome. What made you decide to go with that in the first place? What was it that got your attention? Uh, the price. It was only three hundred and fifty dollars. Hey. You know, I couldn't couldn't pass. It. <laughs> you know, I, I got to tell you, one of the things about the Walthers that I continue to be impressed with is 
the trimness, the slimness, the, the profile of the grip, when you pick it up, it doesn't feel like it could even be a double stack gun because they're so trim. Oh, it fits my hand so well. Have, have you ever had a gun that just screams, shoot me when you pick it up? I mean, this gun, <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I, you know, I, I am so happy with this gun. I really am. <laughs> All right, so what is the intended purpose? Is this like a home defense carry gun, just shoot at the range? What are you going to be doing with it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I carry it with uh, Hornaday Critical Defense. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it, it, it shoots great. You know, uh, I really can't, really can't think of anything else to say about it except it's a wonderful pistol. That, that's great, Bob. Look, I, that, that's what you call your super range report. Thank you, sir. When you can't stop uh, talking, you're just giggling when you're talking about how much you enjoy this gun. That's a good range report right there, by golly. Thanks, Bob. Hey, uh, Lee is in the Upper Peninsula, the UP, Michigan, on three. Hey, Lee, where did you go? Well, I went to a very polite place. Everybody was yes. armed to the teeth. Thousands and thousands of rounds were fired at bowling pins. And I am thinking back, I did not hear one argument that I remember while uh, the whole week I was there. Uh, I was at the pin match in Central Lake, Michigan. Which okay, for those that don't the, know, uh, do, do me a favor, describe a pin match, because people don't know what you're talking about. It's actually called the pin shoot. I misspoke there a little bit. but a pin uh, shoot, okay. You face, you face five pins, five bowling pins, standard bowling pins, mm-hmm. at uh, at uh, eight yards, I believe it is, uh, mm-hmm. and you uh, have to knock them off a uh, table, so you got to drive them about uh, three feet, I believe, uh, okay. and you got to clear the table. You can't leave any standing or laying down or rolling back and forth or anything except they got to leave the table. <laughs> and there are events for, uh starts with handgun, or basic event is handgun against five pins, there's two man uh, team competition, three man. There's an individual shotgun against eight pins. There's uh, side matches with rifle and shotgun, and there's probably more stuff coming because uh, this is just the first year. <laughs> and it's uh, Richard Davis who used to have second chance body armor, uh, right. and his son Matt have uh, started the, the pin shoot which is sort of like a, a descendant of the old Second Chance uh, bowling pin shoot, which was now, awful lot of fun. So, I went to that for 10 years, so, you know. Okay. What, what handgun did you shoot? I shot uh, 41 Magnum. I shot two 41 Magnums, a 6-inch and a 3-inch, and I did very poorly with those, and then I shot a custom pin gun, 45 ACP. I did better with that, but... Uh, Back in the day at the old match, I was slow, mm-hmm. and now I'm both slow and old. <laughs> so <laughs> things didn't go as well as I hoped. <laughs> but I had a lot of fun, and uh, like I said, we shot thousands and thousands of rounds, and uh, I didn't. It was very polite. Everybody seemed to be having a great, great time. That- that is great. Thanks, Lee. That's a good range report. Yeah, bowling pin shoots. Uh, as Lee points out, you've got to get. Five bowling pins off the table, not just knocked over. So you got to have a combination of speed and power. So I mean, you could you could probably knock them over with a nine, but it's going to be difficult to get them off the table with a nine. So people shoot forty-four magnums, forty-ones, and custom forty-fives, and then they come up with weird uh, bullet designs to try to think that'll work better. Lots of fun, lots of fun. And hey, you're just shooting regular old bowling pins and knocking them off the table. It doesn't get any more analog and simple than that. All right, 866-TALK-GUN gets you in. And we're open lines if you'd like to join us right now. I also uh, am still throwing out the question. When you saw the reports, heard them about Steve Scalise and the Republican congressman being shot, this assassin out there trying to kill them all, what did you think and what was your takeaway? Has it changed your view of what you carry, what you do, and how you will respond? 866-TALK-GUN. Laser sights enhance and maintain your accuracy in a time of crisis. Whether you're unbalanced, evading a threat, or engaging from behind cover, a laser sight aids in keeping you on target. Call 800-442-2406. 
or visit crimsontrace.com for a free copy of our laser training video, The Laser's Edge, and learn more about why Crimson Trace is making laser sights standard equipment. For more than 70 years, Timney Triggers has been enhancing the shooter's experience. Whether it's a local competition, a day at the range, or even the hunt of a lifetime, setting the standard in aftermarket triggers, Timney is now producing more than 170 models of triggers for bolt-action rifles, shotguns, AR rifles, and semi-automatic rifles. Proudly made in the USA since 1946. Find your new trigger at TimneyTriggers.com. Attacks happen every day. How will you react? See real people put into real-life criminal attack situations on First Person Defender. Discover what works and what doesn't. Kidnapping, ATM robbery, home invasion, and other attacks. Learn how to save your life and the lives of your family. Get the entire first season on DVD at ShopGunTalk.com. Get prepared. ShopGunTalk.com. It's really pretty simple. Your carry gun is a life-saving device. It must be with you. That's what the Springfield Armory XDS is all about. Small enough to carry, big enough to shoot comfortably, shockingly slim, single stack, with a 3.3-inch or 4-inch barrel, available in 9, 40, or 45. Highly accurate, great trigger, fiber optic front sight for fast aimed fire. The XDS at Springfield-Armory.com. That's Springfield-Armory.com. All right, back with you. One of the uh, things you may have missed, in fact, it was uh, kind of soft launched on the day with, of the shooting, Steve Scalise. Uh, it was scheduled to be released that day, and Ruger held off on it, but um, some other messages didn't get out, and it actually got posted to their website, so I went ahead and released it on Twitter. And I've had this gun for several weeks now. A brand new Ruger 1911 pistol in, wait for it, 10 millimeter. Yeah. Once again, Ruger says, yeah, we're going to go mainstream. When Ruger brought out silencers, you knew that it was mainstream. When Ruger goes with a 10 millimeter, you're going, okay, they are seeing something about this. And, of course, as you well know, we have two Gun Talk guns we have produced through the years. Both of them have been 10 millimeter semi-autos. I am delighted that Ruger is on board here. Full-size gun, but I think you're going to see smaller guns. Uh, we're talking about that. And then, you know, one of the thoughts is, well, gee, if you go with a shorter barrel and a 10, all you're going to get is a 40. Not true, actually. Uh, you still get pretty darn good velocity with a 10, even with a shorter barrel. But, yeah, Ruger has entered the 10-millimeter world. Let's go to uh, Vance on line one in Reno, Nevada. Has some thoughts here. Hey, Vance. Uh, yeah, on your thing about what went through my mind or what went through our minds when the shooting occurred, mm-hmm. uh, the first thing that went through my mind was the beating of Charles, uh, Senator Charles Sumner back in 1856 by Preston Brooks. And, I'm familiar uh, with that. Over the abolitionist movement. Okay. Okay, same thing. And... The other uh, the, the thing about that one was that the I think the brother of Preston Brooks held other congressmen that wanted to intervene, held them off at gunpoint. And this all took place in the halls of Congress. Wow. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, Real Clear History has a uh, detailed write-up on it. And the other thing was that this morning... Uh, I happen to have the TV on, and they had a documentary series called Frozen Planet. And some of the, um, I don't know, hunters, uh, the Russian equal to our Eskimos and Inuits were okay. hunting walrus. And they harpooned one, and they uh, one of the uh, hunters in the boats that they were in dispatched it using an AK-type rifle, one okay. shot to the head. Now, anybody who says that you cannot use or shoot a semi-automatic rifle the same way you can a bolt-action rifle, 
it's baloney because that's the way I shoot my LR-308 is like I used with the, uh, shoot the bolt actions that I had. Well, sure. I mean, obviously, Very you can good. shoot a semi-auto, just fire one shot. I mean, just like you would a bolt action. That's, that's just no issue there whatsoever. You, it only goes, as you and I both know, uh, it only goes bang one time when you pull the trigger. So unless you pull the trigger again, it works just like a bolt action in, in that way. Listen, I've got to scoot. I've got to keep this thing running. And I appreciate the call, sir. I do want to mention that uh, I've never shot a, uh, a walrus. I have, however, shot halibut. Say what? Yeah, in Alaska, you get a big halibut on the line, bring it up beside the boat, take your gun out. In this case, it was a, a rusty thirty eight revolver that my uh, the skipper had in the boat. Then you shoot them between the eyes. You get them upside the boat because you want to kill them because if you bring them in, they're flopping. I mean, we're talking about a 150, 200-pound fish. You throw it on the bottom of the boat, it beats everything. I mean, it'll tear up the boat. So, yeah, it's kind of weird. Uh, you catch a halibut, you put it up beside the boat. You lean over the trans, not the trans of the gunnel, and you uh, you shoot the fish before you bring it in. It was a weird thing. By the way, uh, next, no, August, not next month, August, the National Shooting Sports Foundation is going to have National Shooting Sports Month. And uh, if you are in the firearms industry, you're going to be asked to get involved if you're a shooting range or a gun store or a manufacturer. It's a chance for all of us to get involved, too, because basically it's kind of like the, kind of like the Step Outside program. You introduce somebody to shooting, take some friends with you to the range, get more people involved, show them that this is a safe sport, that these are we are responsible people, that we are good people, we're their neighbors, in essence, to put shooting in front of the public and show it for what it really is rather than the way the media wants to portray guns and us. Yeah, by the way, uh, Ruger also is having a recall. Uh, If you haven't seen this, the Ruger Mark IV, thank you, Jim, for reminding me, that semi-auto pistol, uh, all of them made before June 1st are being recalled. It's a safety issue. So go on the Ruger website if you have one of these. Don't shoot it anymore, and they're going to get it back in and fix it up and take care of it for you. So just kind of a heads up there. Well, let's see. Oh, um, yes, Michael, the line three out of Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, Michael, we have about a minute and a half. Go for it, please. Sure. I bought a uh, Smith & Wesson Governor. It's a ton of fun to shoot, but the trigger has been getting rust on it. I'm wondering if I should maybe call Smith & Wesson and asking them to replace the trigger. <laughs> You're saying the trigger has been getting rust, R-U-S-T? Yes. Wow, that's kind of interesting. Um, now, are you what, what are you doing to protect your gun from rust, I guess is the first question. Well, um, usually, I mean, I, I boiled up the insides, but I usually don't put anything on exterior parts like a trigger. I mean, I've got plenty of other guns. This is uh, the first time this is happening to me. And how is it being stored? It's being stored in a little lockbox um, by my bed. Um, sort of like a little home defense thing. You push the push the buttons on the top and it opens up. Right. Okay. Um, just trying to think. Now, ha- have you tried uh, just you know, rubbing down the uh, the trigger with gun oil or something to protect it? Yeah, I put it on there, but um, it's just kind of concerning that this would happen in the first place. Well, yeah, I mean, I understand. I just, I mean, obviously anything can rust. It's just kind of a case. You know what I would do? Go ahead and contact Mm -hmm. Smith & Wesson. Who knows? It's possible that a vendor had a, you know, a a bad piece or a bad batch of metal for the trigger. I mean, uh, bad bluing, bad whatever. I don't know. But I would certainly contact them and ask them about it. They may want you to send it back so they can take a look at it because, Sometimes they don't know that there's an issue until somebody reports it, and they go, oh, well, let's take a look at that. So I would suggest uh, contact Smith, give him a chance to, to make it right. Uh, in the meantime, while the gun is unloaded, uh, get some gun oil, put it on a cloth, and wipe, wipe down all of the exterior of a gun. You should always wipe down all of the exterior, all of the metal parts of a gun to pr- help prevent rust. Uh, don't spray it on the gun, but spray it on a rag and then wipe it down. Okay, big heck. Rust is everywhere. Rust is the enemy of the guns. Kind of like the gun batteries.
Okay, I guess I can share with you the truth of this. I'm sitting, looking out a window at a beautiful lake and a beautiful range of mountains. Yes, I am in, in Gun Talk Radio's northern headquarters in the state of Idaho. <laughs> beautiful area here. Uh, it is fun to travel a country, to go around, talk to people in different parts of the, the country, talk to people who... Um, do different things, meet interesting people, and so we're doing a bit of that, hanging out where it's cooler and drier than Louisiana is this time of year. Holy cow, heat and humidity. Oh, yeah, by the way, heat and humidity, not good for guns either, especially humidity. We were talking about rust on guns. Yeah, you really do need to wipe your guns down with uh, some kind of rust preventative, and there are a lot of them. Uh, the folks at Brownells have really good products there made specifically for protecting your guns. Also, they have some cool things, like obviously silica gel, uh, desiccants, and they have something called uh, vapor blocks, and they're, they look like wheat thins, if you will, and you scatter them around inside your gun safe, and they give off some kind of a vapor that helps prevent metal from rusting. Very cool stuff, and they really do work. So check it out. Go to brownells.com and look at all the things that they have. But yeah, absolutely, rust is one of the most horrible things on a gun when you pull a gun out that you haven't seen for a while and it's covered with rust, it is the worst feeling. I have done it, and it is just horrible. 866-TALK-GUN gets you in here. Andy has called in out of Huntsville, Alabama on 4. Hey, Andy, what you looking at here? Hello? Hey, Andy, you there? Hey, Andy. Can you hear me? I got you. Go ahead. Talk to me about the NSSF World Rim Fire Championships. Yes, sir. Um... We had the we had the the event last year here in Huntsville, outside of Huntsville, Woodville, Alabama, and uh, it was a big mm-hmm. success. Big. We had fifty guns on the prize table and something like thirty thousand dollars worth of prizes given away. And uh, we're the mm. event again this year in Woodville at Cavern Cove is the name of the range. Um, October mm-hmm. the weekend of October fourteenth and fifteenth. It's a uh, it's a big event, but I'm, I don't ever see it advertised by NSSF anywhere. So I figured maybe your listeners would like to know about it. It's a two day event. Well, well, it's a th- third day. There's a side match on Friday mm-hmm. if you can get there, um, and and it's a, it's a similar format to Steel Challenge five five strings per stage, throw out the slowest mm-hmm. string, you know that kind of thing. Um, but but it's, it's a, all it's rimfire. A, Yes, sir. Twenty-two long-range rimfire pistol and rifle. You have to shoot both. Seven stages of rim, uh, rifle and seven stages of uh, pistol. And uh, well, it's open mean, to anybody. To, I'm sorry. Is it open to everybody? Anybody that wants to enter that can handle the gun safely. Anything from senior citizens on down to preteens. We have, and you wouldn't be you would be amazed at some of the kids that show up at how fast they can shoot a, a twenty-two rifle. Or pistol. Uh, it's incredible. I, mean, you know, it's, I, it, I know it. La- the last couple of years, I think the overall women's women's champion was was a teenager and a preteen. So it, it, the shooting sports, uh, action shooting sports, are, are alive and well with with these youngsters coming up. Um, they, they oh, it's Mumbai. called the NSSF. Yeah, let me just jump in here. NSSF World Rimfire Championships. Check it out, uh, and check out the. We'll check out the NSSF website, but also we'll get some more information on it. Andy, I appreciate the heads up because it sounds like a ton of fun, and we'll see if we can uh, get some promotion going on that because it it would be very worthwhile. But yeah, as far as and thanks for the call. As far as the uh, young people shooting fast and shooting well, duh. Yeah, uh, young eyes and fast reflexes. It's like cheating. Come on. <laughs> And also, yeah, you're right. Some of the nicest people you're going to run into. Those young people who have the discipline, and that is the key word, the discipline to become good at shooting, are usually very disciplined and good in a lot of other ways. All right, we've got a whole lot of stuff coming up your way. We're going to be talking about uh, gun rights, what's going on legislatively. We're going to be, well, a whole lot of things going on. But also, we'll have room for you if you'd like to join us. 866-TALK-GUN. I'm Tom Gresham, and this is Gun Talk.